Hello and welcome back to another GCSE revision lesson. Now, I put out a poll asking students, especially year 11 students, what they find most challenging about the English language, paper two exam, and an overwhelming majority of you who voted in this poll, over 1,000 of you, basically said that question number four is the most challenging aspect of this paper. Now, what I want to show you guys in this lesson is actually how you can effectively tackle this part of the exam in three simple steps. And hopefully it's, this question is gonna seem less challenging, less tricky and less mystifying for you. Okay, so as you, as you can see behind me, um, I have outlined the three steps and the approach that I would suggest you should take when it comes to doing really, really well for this question. Now, remember, when it comes to question number four, this is gonna be your second comparison question. You've already practiced a little bit of the comparison question for question number two. You've been asked to get both extracts, write a summary. Is it a difference or is it a similarity point? Therefore, by the time you get into question number four, if you're working through the paper chronologically, you kind of have already practiced making some comparisons, either similarities in uh, source A and source B or difference. However, for this question, there's a final added step whereby you need to add techniques and you need to analyze, okay, what does this show us about the writer's perspectives? Are they similar or are they different? Now, when it comes to this question, remember, of course, as I mentioned, I've mentioned already writer's feelings and perspective. This question tests your awareness of being able to talk about, okay, so when I'm looking at source A and source B, these are the writer's similar feelings or the different perspectives on this particular area or this particular theme that they're exploring. Remember, the two sources you're given for paper two, they are always somehow thematically linked. Last year for the 2022 exam, it was to do with camping. The previous year, it was to do with sweets. The year before that, it was to do with mountain climbing, okay? There's always a theme. And of course, this theme is conveyed to us through the writers that convey this, okay? The modern writer in source A and the Victorian writer in source B. Now, when you are answering this question, remember that it's worth 16 marks, therefore you wanna spend at least 17 minutes on this question and then test your AO3, your ability to look at two sources and compare them, okay? You're not talking about one paragraph for source one and one paragraph for source two, or one paragraph source A, one paragraph source B. You are integrating that comparison. That's the first thing you need to remember. Step two, approach this question like you would question number two with just one small difference, okay? so. Just like in question two where you've got to talk about both sources, similarity or differences, you're literally applying the same approach to this question, okay? The only difference here is you're then adding also how the writers convey their perspectives through techniques, both language and structural techniques. Now, in this question, of course, you're either gonna be expected to talk about similarity and differences when it comes to the writer's perspectives, and also you need to be able, when you're selecting the bits of evidence to talk about, okay, in source A, I can see that the writers use structure in this way. In source B, maybe the writers use language in this way. Paragraph number two, here's an example in source A of where language has been used by the writer. Here's another example of structure used by this other writer, okay? You need to mix it up and aim to write at least two to three comparative paragraphs. I keep on emphasizing comparative. You need to integrate your analysis. You need to talk about both sources in every single paragraph that you write. You do not write Source A in one paragraph, source B in another paragraph, because that means they're just talking, you're talking about them in parallel. You need to integrate them, okay? Final step when it comes to answering question number four is my suggestion when you're answering this question, adopt the simple PIL paragraph framework. PIL is point, evidence, explanation, link. Let me show you how you can do so when writing comparatively for this question. Start with your point. In your opening point, obviously look at the keywords in the question and then talk about how the author of source A shows this as well as the author of source B when it comes to the feelings and perspectives. Are they similar or are they different? It depends on the question that you were given. The second step in your pill paragraph is your evidence. Then you embed, here's some evidence from source A, here's some evidence from source B, which is illustrating what I'm trying to say in my opening point. Next step is your explanation. Now this is where the bulk of your marks are. This is where now you're gonna start racking up lots of points and lots of analysis from your examiner. This second E is you explaining what does this illustrate in terms of the writer's perspectives for both source A and source B, and you're doing so by referring to subject terminology. You need to make mention, metaphor, simile, simple sentence, short sentence, one word sentence, whatever it is, you need to talk about it for source A and source B and say what this tells us about writer's viewpoints and perspectives. Final step in your peel paragraph, the link, you simply link it back to the questions, the keywords, and say, okay, therefore what this is showing me is writer's viewpoints are similar in this way, 
Ratchet's viewpoints are different in this way, okay? I hope I've kind of made this straightforward for you guys. So now what I'm gonna do is show you how you can apply this three-step framework to a past paper question and how you can write a model response for this. So let me show you how to apply the framework that I've suggested for question number four. This is the writer's viewpoints and perspectives question. And I'm more specifically gonna show you how to apply it for this particular exam question. This is a June 2020 paper. Remember, all of these exam papers that I look at and I go over from AQA, you can download it for free off AQA's website, okay? So now, as I said, with this exam question and this paper, I'm gonna be going over a worked model response and walking you through how you can approach this question. Now, remember, if you do go ahead and practice this question, you always get a choice of two sources. And of course, for question number four, this is your second big comparative question. You've got to do a lot of things. You firstly not only need to compare both sources within each of your comparative paragraphs, but you also need to make sure you're adding relevant subject terminology, some language and structure techniques when you are talking about the writer's viewpoints and perspectives. Now, of course, I have already pre-worked this. So if you want to read these sources for yourself and you want to kind of get a bit more of a detailed understanding of these sources, do download them and read them for yourself. However, just quickly, remember that source A, if you've read this, okay, and if you're familiar with this extract, this source is taken from an autobiographical account and it's a modern extract by a guy called Joe Simpson. He basically describes this horrible, horrible descent down a mountain. His leg is broken and he's with his fellow climber, Simon Yates. However, Simon isn't that great in kind of helping him descent. So Simon is kind of carrying him, but he kind of lets him, you know, sway here and there. His leg starts catching things and he's just in loads of pain, right? And the, um, the way this extract ends, we are still unsure and uncertain as to whether they actually managed to get down safely. So we're left on a little bit of a cliffhanger and we can see that Joe, who's in loads and loads of pain, so his experience of climbing and descending this mountain is really, really tainted. It's marred, it's made worse by his broken leg. He's just in, you know, he has a very, very negative tone when he's describing this descent, okay? The way he's going down this mountain. In contrast, of course, the theme that ties both sources is climbing on mountains, climbing dangerous mountains. However, in this case, Gertrude Bell, the author of this Victorian source, it's a letter. She actually has a very optimistic outlook, okay? So even if she's a novice, she's new to this, she hires a guy called Marius and she her experience is completely different. In fact, it's the complete opposite. She has an amazing experience. She leaves, you know, um, there's lots of stars, there's the moon, she uses celestial imagery. She's describing this really, really beautiful landscape, even if it's quite dangerous. At some points, she's not very good at climbing. So Marius literally has to carry her up as well as down. However, this only makes her experience really, really positive. It's quite gentle with her, unlike Simon. And right at the end, not only does she manage to get down the mountain with the help of Marius, but actually she even goes back to her hotel and even sips five cups of tea before she writes about this experience. So of course, the writer's perspectives are very different in the sense that you've got Simpson who's in lots of pain, whilst Gertrude is, um, you know, she, she has a great experience. However, the main similarity and the overarching thing that ties them both together is they're both kind of exploring and climbing mountains and climbing very dangerous mountains, okay? So, of course, if you want to get a bit more detail, you can read that in your own time. However, let me show you guys how to approach this question. Now, with this question, you're working very hard for these 16 marks, okay? So, my suggestion would be the following. If you are not very good at time management, if you're also not very good at being speedy in your writing, dive straight into writing at least two or three peel paragraphs where you are integrating and comparing both sources, okay? In your opening point, you're talking about source A and source B. In your evidence, you're talking about source A and source B. You're taking a bit of evidence from source A, a bit of evidence from source B. In your explanation, you're saying, are they similar, are they different? And you're thinking about language and structure techniques in source A and source B. And of course, in your link, you then show what does this illustrate when you're thinking about the question in source A and source B. So now, quickly reviewing the question itself, it says, for this question, you need to refer to the whole of source A together with the whole source B. Compare, this is AO3, how the writers convey their different feelings and perspectives on their adventures in the mountain. So here you're asked to focus squarely on differences. Similar to question number two, the only difference is 
In question two, you're asked to write a summary of differences between Marius and Simon. In this case, it's more the writers. And of course, in this case, it's also the writer's feelings and perspectives, okay? And you're asked to compare the different feelings and perspectives on the adventures, compare the methods. Now here, when you're asked to talk about methods, you need to show how the authors of Source A and Source B use language and structure to convey the feelings and perspectives and of course, support your response with references to both texts. My suggestion is, if you're really struggling for time or you're not very quick at speed writing, 16 marks is still quite a lot, so you need to write at least a minimum, at least two comparative paragraphs. You're integrating both Source A and Source B. If you can, try to aim to write three peel paragraphs and if you're super, super confident, very comfortable with this question and you've practiced, you've put in the work, you can start off with a nice brief introduction, summarizing the main differences, three peel paragraphs uh, for source A, source B, then conclusion. I'm quite extra, so I'm gonna start off with an introduction, okay? So of course, I start off this question with an introduction. This is just kind of icing on the cake, okay? You don't have to do this. But I'm gonna read through my introduction and then I'm gonna walk you through my first comparison peel point. It's evident that both uh, Simpson and Bell, so this is the surname of both authors, have contrasting feelings and perspectives on their adventures. So I'm reasserting and reaffirming to the examiner, hey, Mr. Examiner, hey, Miss Examiner, I'm totally understanding this question and I'm showing you that I understand that they have different feelings and perspectives. To be sure, Simpson's feelings are clouded by his pain, yet Bell's feelings are influenced by her professional guide. While Simpson's perspective seems pessimistic, Bell's perspective is far more optimistic. That's my opening introduction. However, now diving into the meat and potatoes of this actual answer, okay? This is the main part. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through how I have integrated my comparison for both sources and how they are different when it comes to the writer's feelings and perspectives. So I've started off with my opening point. Firstly, it's evident that Simpson is uh, in source A, feels a roller coaster of emotions whilst on the mountains. Nonetheless, Belle and Source B seems excited throughout her journey, which is a contrast to Simpson's despair. I've opened by discussing how different their feelings and perspectives are in my opening point. I've made it really clear. Here's the difference between Source A and Source B. That's my opening point. Then here's my evidence. In Source A, the author sobbed, gasped, and swore at the snow. Yet in Source B, the writer felt she started her trip on a perfect night where there were stars and a moon. That's my evidence from both sources. Here's my explanation. Now here, this is where you are talking about the methods that the writers use to convey their different feelings and perspectives. The writer of Source A uses the rule of three to convey his deep despair as he was painfully descending the mountain. Now here, I've talked about language technique for Source A. Nonetheless, the author of Source B uses celestial imagery. Celestial imagery is stuff relating to moon, stars, heavens, okay? That's really powerful language analysis. So again, I'm talking about language. So the author of Source B uses celestial imagery to convey her exuberance, which means happiness, when climbing the mountain. So I've talked about rule of three language in Source A, celestial imagery language in Source B. What does this show? It's showing the difference in the feelings and perspectives. Now I'll simply finish off by linking back to the question. Thus, while Simpson feels downcast on his mountain adventure, so he feels really sad and upset, Belle is quite expectant and positive during her adventure. So as you can see here in my first peel paragraph point evidence explanation link, my opening point is both sources. My evidence, I've embedded two bits of evidence from source A and source B. Then in my explanation, I'll talk about rule of three versus celestial imagery, the methods that the authors used to show the differences in their perspectives before linking it back to the question. I'm constantly integrating both sources. Here's my second peel paragraph. Secondly, it's evident that Bell and Simpson have differing perspectives as on their guides, and this influences their experiences. Simpson seems annoyed with Simon, yet Bell is pleased with Marius. Second point where I'm talking about another aspect in the differences between their views and perspectives. Here's my evidence. While Simpson was howling, I swore Simon's character to the devil, Belle felt nurtured as Marius, ellipsis, pulled me up like a parcel. Here's my evidence for both sources. Now here's my explanation. Source A employs a complex sentence, and now here I'm talking about sentence types, which is structure, to convey Simpson's fury at Simon's lack of empathy as he quickly lowered him down. However, Bell in Source B uses a simile language to depict how pleased she is with Marius's care 
as he pulls her up the mountain. That's my evidence for both. Complex sentence structure, that's the method I'm talking about in source A. Simile method in source B. Here's my link. Consequently, whilst the writer of source A adopts a negative perspective on his companion, the writer of source B has a far more positive view on her, of her companion. This affects the experiences on the mountains, linking back to the both questions, talking about what's going on in source A versus source B. Now, here's my final uh, peel paragraph, talking about source A, source B, differences in writers' feelings and perspectives. Opening point. Finally, it's evident that the author of Source A doubts if he will arrive back at base safely. Nevertheless, the writer of Source B seems smug that she's arrived back from the mountain safely. When she's smug, it means like she's really pleased with herself, somewhat arrogantly, okay? Uh, as Simpson's journey continued, he admits, so here's my evidence for Source A, my optimism evaporated. I've taken a quote right from the end of the text. Here's my evidence for Source B. Yet Belle considers her journey with complete satisfaction. That's my evidence from Source B. Here's my explanation, including both sources. The author of Source A uses a simple sentence structure to show his doubts and pessimism on whether he will complete his adventure. Yet the writer of Source B employs a complex sentence, again structure, to reveal her confidence and optimism when it came to completing the mission. I've made this paragraph in terms of methods, a structure paragraph. Now I'm finish off by linking back to the question. Hence, while Simpson seems doubtful and pessimistic about his journey, Bell seems positive and optimistic. Again, I've linked it back to uh, the question, talked about both sources. Now here's my conclusion, not necessary. This is just me tying it up and basically saying, okay, this are the differences between both climbers. In conclusion, it's evident that both writers held different feelings and perspectives. Bell seemed more optimistic than Simpson, yet their experiences were also influenced by their companions. Simpson was angry at Simon's lack of compassion, which influenced him, yet Bell was pleased with Marius's care, and this made her feel positive. Not absolutely necessary. This is for those of you who are like, yep, totally got this exam, feeling super confident, I'm gonna be able to write loads. Okay, start off with your intro, three body paragraphs, your three pill points, talking about source A and source B, consistently within the same paragraph. You're integrating, then you finish off with a conclusion. So that's really it when it comes to how to approach question number four for the paper two exam.